Hey there, Mario here. Welcome back to another episode of the Cloudcast Show. In today's episode, we will teach you how you can finally build a DevOps team that actually works. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cloudcast Show. This is Mario. And I am Guillermo. And in this podcast, we will discuss latest advances in cloud technologies, the world of DevOps, and software development hacks. All these to make your life easier. So if you're a technology expert, you own a business, you are an IT director, or just a regular geek guy, then you came into the right place. Well, hello everybody. This is Guillermo. And yes, today we're going to talk about how to build the perfect DevOps team. I'm very excited to be here and recording the second episode of the podcast. What about you, Mario? Yeah, I'm very excited to kick this new episode, but I'm gonna say that please don't hate me because I bet that no one knows how to build a team, a DevOps team that actually works. And so take a seat, go get your best cup of coffee and your notebook because we are about to dive into this point. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, what? how can I start? Uh, to I think that to build your perfect DevOps team, you essentially need four points, which are people, which is number one. Number two would be tools, then processes, and finally, a culture. I think those are the top four. Okay, but people like just regular human beings or what exactly are we expecting of these people? Well, when I'm talking about people, I mean that you need to get the right team for to to achieve a perfect DevOps team, right? So you you need someone that actually knows coding or that it's very technical, so that he can he can keep tracking on all the code that gets submitted or that has knowledge on, on what the process would be, which is another point. But essentially, you need very specialized or at least people who know about their their areas. Yeah. For example, a developer, a project manager, um, QA uh, people. So you need at least one of a kind to co to complement the perfect DevOps team. That's that's what I mean when you need uh, for the first point that you need people. Yeah, well, I was about to ask you because you said that you need a person that knows coding or that is technical, but that means that no technical person can be part of this team? Yeah, for sure. They can. I mean, they can and you need to train them. So one part of that uh, first point is training the people. So you get the people, you train the people, right? Okay. So they are able to perform their jobs and to know all the process that they will do. Okay, well, what would you say that are like the main topics or the main points that a person needs like achieve in order to become a valuable team member of this DevOps team? Uh, well, for instance, they will need to know something about the area that they are complementing. For example, you. Or let's say an, one, one person on the DevOps team. They need to know about what the process is going to about what the process is going to be. They need to know a little bit a little bit of everything. Not not everything, but a little bit of every area. Okay, it's, it's like getting familiar or knowing the the company processes but not not like a full expert but just like the 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 enough to achieve the company goals. That's right. Yeah they need they need to to know a little bit of everything but the essence of being a team means that everybody's gonna complement the other. So together they will achieve the goals. And what do you think about training people? Because I will say that like it's very hard because people is like afraid of change or something and they don't like like get out of the comfort zone. Yeah, well, training people, as you say, is very, very hard, uh, especially because they're afraid of change. Uh, when we are talking about DevOps, it's uh, very or uh, 
strong cultural change. So when we are changing our minds in order to confront DevOps, people tend to be very closed. So um, training them becomes a real challenge. But uh, we, especially the people that work in the IT area, we need to confront those changes because the world is evolving, technology is evolving, and we need to do it. There's, there's, no, there's no point of not doing the change. Yeah, because, I mean, there is a stereotype of IT people that is like not open to the world or to change or something. It's more like, yeah, well, they're afraid. Yeah, Every, everybody's afraid of something. So, yeah. Okay, now speaking of the tools that we need to to get these people trained and get these people into the DevOps um, methodology, what would you say that like is the essential tool for, for this? Uh, well, it becomes hard to say that uh, we that we have a, speci a specific set of tools. Instead, I would say that there's a uh, wide variety on the market that we can use in order to train our DevOps people or to establish tools on our DevOps process. But for example, we need a tool to, uh, we need a tool to every part of the process. For example, the plan, we need a tool for planning. So uh, we need to get something that helps us in the, in the early stages of our application or when you are uh, developing plans for your company. Something like Trello, Jira, probably you're familiar with all these technologies, right? Yeah, but just to help the audience that we are talking about like non-physical tools or do we need some physical tools like, I don't know, post-its or notes or... Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's also very good if you can complement these online tools or virtual tools with physical, um, like physical screen boards or whiteboards or whatever. Yeah, it's always better if you can do it because there's people that actually um, remember more things when they write or is when they do all this physical stuff. I don't know, I don't know how to call it. But uh, yeah, of course, you can always complement all the virtual tools with some physical ones. Yeah, and, and it doesn't mean that we need a tool for everything, but... Like you said, we can use Trello, which is a task organizer to, to get the, the task in order and according to its status or something. And one for communication and one for sharing, I mean, files with the people or with the team or something like that. That's right. Yeah, it's basically, you need uh, the people, uh, once you have trained them, you need, uh, you need them to select the tools that you're going to use in all your DevOps process so that everything is um, already planned and in place to bring your product, your application, or your changes to life uh, from that pipeline of tools or process. Yeah, and what about the cost of these tools? Because there are many tools that I, you say like, they're doing magic for the companies, but the costs are, the costs are like too high for, for them to achieve them or to get these tools. Or, Are they offering a free trail or something? Uh, yeah, well, there are all kind of tools in the market. There are free tools that you can use. There are paid tools that uh, companies or large enterprises buy to make them, uh, to establish more of their processes. But uh, you can use whatever you want, whatever you feel more, more comfortable with. I think that's the one that you need to use. Yeah. What about communication? Is the world still using like the old email thing, or do we have something more like something more fast, like Skype or something like that? Yeah, something that we were talking about in our previous podcast was Slack, which a lot of people got confused because that is not a DevOps tool. But yeah. I was talking about an example, right? But in this case, yeah, we can improve a lot of communication using Slack. Because it's, it's like the newest version of Skype or something similar, where you can get all your development team, QA team, ops team, or finance team, whatever team you need to use, and integrate it with a lot of tools uh, that can be used to increase their productivity, 
increase visibility on everything or, or every process in the pipeline. So, okay, so these other tools have like an integration with Slack, which will help us in future steps of the process with the process that we need to, to optimize our DevOps or optimize our processes in the company, right? Right, that's right. Okay, and now that we are talking about the processes, do we need a process for, for everything? I mean, do we need a process for documentation? Do we need a process for coding? Do we need a process for communication? Or DevOps is more like, it's, it's more like work first and then do the, 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 the annoying thing later, or what do you think? Well, uh, I would say that when we are talking about DevOps um, and we often also add agile methodologies where we care mo more about the people than processes and documentation, but we certainly need some processes in place so that everybody can follow in order to create code, implement or integrate code with Uh, code from other people, especially if you are working with a near shore team or people around the world. And how are you delivering this code to your different environments, especially if they are dev or QA environments or your production environment, which can affect your customers. So, yeah, I think that you need a process for everything that you are going to set on your team, for example, a process on how to create code, a process on how to create certain documentation, and a process of how to uh, create a project, a new project, a new feature, whatever, so that you can have a specific um, points or like a kind of checklists. Yeah, so it's not like the team can do whatever they want, but following a, a couple of processes that, that yes, Still, they are like agile process, but are like needed for 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 DevOps for DevOps work. Yeah, I would say not processes as it is defined right now. Okay. So there are not uh, processes, large processes. Let's say it's more like f always follow a specific actions or a kind of how to guides for doing yeah, well, X, Y thing or something like that. Something that is not hard to, to complete. Yeah, that's right. Something that, like best practices or so. Okay. Well, I think one of those processes, like you, you say, building a code. What do we need to, to build a code that is effective and still is faster and still is like a good code? Well, um, there's... Um, process right now which is very uh, trending uh, which is called the git flow okay so in this process what you actually do is um, creating new uh, branches to create new features and all your developers work in different branches and when they want to bring this new feature to life especially if they are like working in the same feature okay. which, is a which is a large feature and It's complemented by five or two, three, ten developers. Uh, you merge them all together, and then you are uh, testing this new feature. But it makes the integration of this code faster because they will already follow a methodology and certain best practices for coding as, as a team, not individually, that makes this Uh, integration and new code addition to the repository faster. Okay, I think that I'm gonna go back a little on the Git thing because most of the developers already know what Git is. But what will you, how you can explain to the to the no technical audience what a Git is, what a repository is, what is what does it mean like merging and what is a branch or something like that. Well, I would say that we can define Git as a system that has all your pieces of code or all your pieces of code integrated into one place. And what a branch is, we can define it as a version, a specific version of your code. And so if you have different branches, so you have different versions. And when you want to merge 
or um, get all these changes together, these branches together, that's a merge. Okay, well, and now speaking of our final point, which is culture. What is culture in this DevOps thing? So what I mean by culture, when you are implementing a DevOps team or when you are creating your DevOps team, is that when, when you train the people or when you get the people, when you train them with the right tools and you show them what is the way or what is your processes, you already have developed a, a culture, right? So your people is trained, they know how to use the tools, they know what is the life cycle of your application, changes or whatever. Now you have a culture, so you don't need to do the process again. So that means if anyone leaves, another guy from the same team can take uh, can take his place or whatever, yeah? Or, or if you hire a new, a new DevOps guy or a new developer or a new QA guy, they will, uh, they will get to action faster because you already have enabled DevOps. Your, um, your learning curve for all your processes and your documentation is very well prepared and everything is faster when you have DevOps enabled on your team. Yeah, okay, so it's not, it's not like a regional team, but you will end with a team that will know how to communicate communicate better, to communicate better, to in general world like have a better better organization. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I mean. So if everybody knows a bit of everything, you have developed a culture where they will be able to share knowledge with uh, new hirings or um, get to action if someone leaves so that's something that scares a lot of a lot of uh, big companies or startups when their uh, core people leave who would take her, his place or her place and how are they going to do it so when you when you enable or when you create your perfect devops team anybody can take the place who 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 left on the company so yeah that's what I mean by the culture, and that is a very important thing that your team completely adopts a DevOps culture in order to uh, bring products to life faster, implement changes faster, um, enable security or DevSecOps, and optimize your application. Uh, constantly provide your feedback about your products or services and so on okay and this is a team that actually works yeah well and now to conclude what would you say to the audience about this general thing of DevOps I would say to the audience that if they are not doing DevOps as we described they are joining it wrong that's what I would say <laughs> okay and I will say that people do not be afraid of change, embrace the change and keep learning on this IT area because it's bigger and it's, and it's growing every year. And yeah, I think that's it for, for today's episode. Thank you guys for listening. If you like the podcast, please subscribe to it. And if you need more information, you can follow us on our website, clickigtech.com or on social media, click it smart technologies. See you in the next episode.